Hello, and welcome to a new special edition of True Audio Files Vinyl Hall, Black Friday Record Store Day. So, here we are, November of 2020. COVID uh, bearing down hard on us, and I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm going to basically go over all of my Record Store Day purchases I got today. I got almost everything I wanted. There's still one thing I want to get, and hopefully I can get it at some point because it's probably the one that I one of the ones I wanted the most I would have to say I got just about everything else I wanted so I am going to kind of sort of speed through a lot of these I'm only going to show the vinyl itself if it's got some sort of color variation or something like that so let's get started first up is I'm going to do a couple of the, the singles that I got the first one I got was Chris Cornell patience but I got this one more for the fact that it's also got Nothing Compares to You, his, basically these are covers. Patience is a Guns N' Roses song, and Nothing Compares to You is a Prince song. So as you know, I'm a Prince fan, so I had to grab this uh, single. And it also comes on white vinyl, as you can see. Looking forward to checking that one out. I've already heard the Nothing Compares to You, so I haven't heard the, the Patience one yet. So that one, uh, that one will be interesting. This one I found fun. Uh, I was more bought on a whim more than anything else because I don't think I own anything else by this band, but it's the Los Straight Jackets. And uh, it's basically two covers of a Beatles song, I Feel Fine, which then they, it looks like the Let It Be album cover. And then Time Is On My Side, Rolling Stones cover, which it looks like the Some Girls Rolling Stones cover. I thought that was pretty fun and I, uh, I can't wait to check that out. I'm hoping I really like it. So uh, since again, it was one of those ones I bought on a whim. Next one was sort of kind of on a whim. I knew about it and was kind of hemming and hawing on whether I should get it or not. And it's Curtis Knight and the Squires, the PPX Sessions Volume 2, no business. But most importantly is not the fact that it's Curtis Knight, but it's more of the Squires, which one of those Squires is Jimi Hendrix. This is actually a release done by the Hendrix Estate, and it was cut by Bernie Grunman and pressed at uh, QRP. Uh, so it should be a pretty good version, and as you can see, it is on brown vinyl. So, not sure why they decided brown, but hey, more power to them, right? <laughs> Next one up is from band Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. This one was another one I was sort of hemming and hawing about. I love Sharon Jones and the, and the Dap Kings. I actually saw them open up for Prince, which is the first time I had ever heard of them before, and they blew me away. This is pretty much just a covers album, but... It'll be interesting to hear how it is. It wasn't stupidly expensive, so I figured I'd give it a try, and I really like the organic sound of most of their recordings, too, so I, I hope it's really good. Next one is Alice in Chains' Sap. This is an EP they released back in the 90s. Uh, I want to say it was between their first and second albums, but I can't remember. Some good songs on here. Uh, it's only been available on vinyl that I've seen, anyways, as part of a two-EP combined together set where you had Jar of Flies and Sap on the same album for a music on vinyl reissue. So I decided I wanted to get that. This is one that I really, really like a lot. Uh, I already have it on CD, but this is the first time the, co the entire collection has been available on record, and that's Beastie Boys' Some Old Bullshit. It's basically mostly their their stuff that they did before they did rap, before they became popular. It's primarily all punk hardcore stuff. The only exception to that is the song Cookie Puss, which uh, I don't know if you've ever heard it, but if you, it's kind of think of like the Jerky Boys, but with a, a backbeat to it. It's kind of fun, actually. Pretty excited to hear that. I'm hoping that it sounds really good. Next one up. Oh, sorry, I should probably show you on that one. Not that it's a huge deal, but this one was pressed comes with the lyri uh, lyrics well i don't know if it's really a lyric sheet but basically oh it's actually kind of nice i didn't even open it up all the way so i guess it may have lyric sheet and there's a cookie puss inner sleeve uh right here and polywog stew was uh, an ep that they put out that where most of the stuff came from but uh some great artwork this is the this is the cover to the uh cookie puss 12 inch that i've got as well um the cover is blue and the and the 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 logo and the guys are in red, I believe, or vice versa, I should say. Uh, the cover's blue and they're red, or I don't know. I don't remember the exact color, but not. But anyways, these, this is pressed on white vinyl. This was done at Palace. So it Palace or Furnace, uh, either one. They're both owned by the same company. Just one's in Germany, and 
ones in the US, but both uh, both do a great job pressing. So I was happy to see that. Um, so I don't have to worry about a terrible pressing of it. Next one was kind of an interesting one. This is basically it's Nina Simone, Billy Holiday, and Betty Levette. But what makes this one? I mean, I really like Nina Simone and Billy Holiday. Billy Holiday the most, I would say. But what really sets this one apart is it's kind of cool. It's actually got two grooves, and you know you don't know which uh, song you're going to hear. Basically, you've got the same song performed by two different artists on the same side. So if you look here. Um, you can see here you've got Billy Holiday doing Strange Fruit and Betty Lavelle doing Strange Fruit, and then uh, you see Nina Simone and Betty Lavette doing I Hold No Grudge. But basically, depending on where you drop the needle is going to depend is going to determine what song, which version you hear. So there's basically that both songs are on the same album, but they're on the same <laughs> groove path, if you will. So I thought it was a really interesting. Uh, take and i'm looking forward to checking that one out you don't get too many albums like that i think the only other one i can think of i'm sure there's plenty of others and you could tell me in the comment section but i know that there was a monty python one that did that i also think there were some 45s that were released for record store day that was like a, there was like a baseball game or 45 and stuff like that but anyway next up I, i'm really looking forward to this one i'm sure the sound quality is not going to be good but it's dr demento first century dementia basically this is a uh, two record set uh, compilation of basically novelty songs from the 1910s and 1920s uh, i actually have the box set oh, it's up here somewhere he they released a box set of the stuff from like 50s 60s 70s and 80s i believe it was probably in like the late 80s or early 90s that i got it's awesome and so i'm really looking forward to that i don't have any of those songs so next up oh i didn't i don't think i opened this one so maybe we'll open this one i could have sworn i did but anyways next one up is one that uh, i'm looking forward to i just bought the deluxe version of it basically it's elliot smith alternative versions it's basically songs that are alter alternative versions of the songs that were on his self-titled album and this one is on kind of a transparent blue smoke type color, which is very cool. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see where it was pressed, but looks like there's all kinds of stuff on, on the dead wax. So uh, Next up, I bought another one of these. I want to say it was probably the first record store day this year, the uh, August one. But anyways, this is... Uh, Herbie Hancock Trio, and I don't remember the name of the actual title of this one, but I oh, just the Herbie Hancock Trio by the looks of it. But it's basically an album that was only re, uh, released in the uh, in Japan on vinyl, and I believe it was later released on CD here. But uh, basically, it's got Ron Carter on bass. I don't remember who else is on it, but uh, I'm looking forward to checking this one out. The last one I thought was pretty good. This one, <laughs> I am very interested in. I think it's going to be very cool to see what it's all about. Almost didn't get it because I really didn't pay much attention to what it was. Uh, but then when I actually found out what it was, I, I had to get it. It's basically Jazz Sabbath. Try to compact the story down as much as I can. But essentially, the, it, it started out as a kind of a, a hoax release as, by the guy who did keyboards for... Black Sabbath. Uh, I can't remember his name to save my life, but I'm sure it's on here as I drop the record on the floor, <laughs> the record cover on the floor. But basically, he, you know, fake claimed that he wrote all the out songs that were bla released by Black Sabbath and that they were jazz versions and he did them first. So ba basically, that's what this album is. It's on a very cool blue color. But anyways, so it's basically jazz interpretations of Black Sabbath songs and it came with a comes with a uh, DVD with a fake documentary about this guy and how we got the start of making this uh, and how the Black Sabbath stole his uh, his music so I think it's gonna be fun I can't wait to check it out the only thing that aggravates me about it is it was pressed at my least favorite pressing plant of all times URP hopefully they didn't screw it up too much but I got number I want to say it was 685 out of 1500 so here's another one that this is one that i'm really excited about uh paid way too much for it but it is a basically sonny rollins in holland 
basically 1967 studio and live recordings. It was cut by, mastered by Kevin Gray, uh, pressed at RTI, I believe. Yep, three record set. Sonny Rollins is one of my favorite jazz artists of all times, so I can't really wait to check check this out. It looks like it's got two sides of live stuff and four sides, maybe, of, of studio stuff, I believe. Well, maybe not. I don't know. But anyways, uh, I'm very excited to check that one out. That was probably one of the ones I was most looking forward to, but unfortunately, uh, very, also the most expensive one. But anyway, <clears throat> next up, Motorhead on parole. So uh, apparently this is the, the uh, basically it was going to be their first studio album as Motorhead, but it got canned. I don't know the entire backstory to it, but basically this is the full album, I believe remastered. And then some alternate takes and demo material on here. So it's a two-record set. And it's got lining note, liner notes from uh, one of the founding member, members, Lucas Fox, which I don't believe was on any of the next albums. But you Motorhead diehards, I'm sure, will let me know if that's true or not. I, I like Motorhead a lot. I just don't know their lineups throughout the years as much, besides Lemmy. <laughs> Speaking of Lemmy and Motorhead, the next one up is kind of a fun one. It's kind of on the fence about getting this one, but I still I think I'm pretty glad that I got it anyways. But it's basically Ace of Spades, but it's basically a Christmas got a Christmas cover on it with Lemmy and uh, given a finger in his Santa Claus suit. <laughs> but it's basically that Ace of Spades, and then the the side B. It's a 12 inch single. Side B is Dirty Love, and then a instrumental version of Ace of Spades. So should be fun to check that one out. Next one up is. I don't remember if this is a color and vinyl. We'll find out. But anyways, Nora Jones, Playdate. Basically, it uh, has a few uh, duets on it, but basically some stuff I think that was previous release, unreleased stuff uh, from the sessions of the last album or two that she did. Looking forward to checking this out. I, <clears throat> I really like Nora Jones. I like her first couple albums much better than come a lot of the more recent stuff but i still really like the, the more recent stuff also so next one up which i think probably had the most amount of pressings done for this uh, record store day uh there's probably gonna be a ton of them out there but it's u2 boy the 40th anniversary edition limited uh edition for black friday i believe i'm assuming that the limited portion of it is the fact that it is on white vinyl so it looks really nice. I don't know where it was pressed though, unfortunately, but it uh, looks like, I believe Bernie Grumman Studios, studio, had a hand at uh, the mastering and cutting of this, but uh, neither Bernie Grumman or Chris Bellman uh, did it. It was, I believe the other gentleman on it, uh, it says here somewhere, but anyway. Uh, it actually comes with a two-sided poster, which is kind of a cool one, and then, and then some liner notes. I'll just show the poster real quick, again, just because of time. So it's basically the album cover, which uh, is cool. And then <clears throat> the other side is pictures of the boys back in back in the day. <laughs> I believe this is the same. This these are the, this is the same artwork that's in like the uh, inner sleeves and uh, obviously the front cover. But love this album. Really, really like uh, old U2. Uh, I mean, I like all of their stuff, but I definitely, if I had to say, I would say anything prior to Aktung Baby um, are probably my favorite stuff. So, uh, and including Aktung Baby, I like that a lot too. So, last one on my list, which I was kind of excited to get. Can't say I'm a gigantic fan, but uh, I do like this album quite a bit. It's Tesla, great radio controversy. And I don't have this, I have their next album that I've found, but I have yet to find this on vinyl. Now, this is a reissue. I believe it was limited to a thousand copies. Has a kind of a nice inner paper sleeve. I believe it's a reproduction of what was uh, out back in, uh, you know, whenever it was released, I think it was 88 or 89, whatever. But it's also on a translucent purple. It doesn't look too purple in the video that I'm seeing now, but trust me, it's a purple or magenta color. Very nice. And I believe, although I'm not certain, I believe that it is pressed at MPO because 
it says it's a French import on the cover on the OB sticker, or not sticker, but OB section. See if you see there, it says French import. <clears throat> and I don't know of another pressing plant in France, but I'm sure any some whoever uh, else is is on here that know a lot about the pressing plants, you'll you'll correct me, but I don't know of any other pressing plants in France. But again, so Tesla, great radio controversy. So another limited run print that I'm very excited to get. So uh, that is everything I got for record store day, which was quite a bit. Went into this thinking I was gonna get, you know, ten, five or 10 records like I'm almost always doing and then end up with way too many of them. So uh, anyway, let me know what you think. I would love to hear your comments below. I would also really love to hear what you got for record store day. Uh, the only other one that I was hoping for is Anthrax Soldiers of Metal, I believe it was called. There's only a thousand printed and pressed, but my store didn't get them, unfortunately. So I'm going to try to go online later today and maybe I'll update later and I'll let you know if I got it or not. But that is what I got for this, uh, this record store day. And please comment below. Let me know what you got. Tell me what you think. And if you have anything else uh, that you want to comment below on, please feel free to do so. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you uh, want to uh, continue to see what I put out, please subscribe. And then you can hit that alert bell to let you know when my new videos come out. That's everything I got for today for Record Store Day, Black Friday, November 2020. Hope you have a great rest of the day and thank you very much.